Hello and welcome to this session on Selenium Java Framework from Scratch. I'm Raghav and today we are going to learn about page object model. So in this series until now we have been discussing about the concepts and about how do you use Selenium functions. But today we are actually going to start with test design techniques in a framework and the very first we are going to look at is POM which is page object model. So this session you can follow on Windows as well as on Mac and as always we are going to go very basic step by step. So let's get started and first let us understand what is page object model. So page object model is a design principle and let me go to the browser and let me go to Google and search for page object model. So if I write page object model in Selenium and search for some images. I will go to images. So here you will get some uh, images for reference. Let us see here. So you can see until now we have created a class where we write our all our locators and also the actions in a single class. So you can see class A we are writing our objects, locators and their methods. So if I go to the framework that we have been developing and go to our test case that we created in our last session you can see here all our object locators and their actions everything is in the single class however in page object model we say that all the object locators are stored separately in a separate class and then the test methods are stored separately so we have all the objects for every page stored in a separate class uh, let us also look at some other uh, pictures that will be helpful in defining page object model. Let us see this. So this is again a concept of page object model where we keep our objects in a separate page and then there is page factory also that we will learn uh, in the later sessions and let us see this one. Yeah so here you can also see this is a page object model design where we have separate classes for all the web pages where the objects are stored so for example we have a login page so all the objects of the login page like text box uh, password text box and the submit button or the login button we will be storing all the locators in a separate class and then again for the home page we will create a separate class and create uh, store all the locators and then in the test we will refer these objects from here so let us see how do we do this here so let us first complete our definition of page object model. So here we say create separate object repository to store object locators. For each web page there should be a separate page class. Okay, So for every web page in your web application you have to create a separate class to store the object locators and the page class will have all the object locators and preferably actions as well for the corresponding page. Okay, so now let us implement this. The first thing is we have to create a class for each web page. So let us go to our framework. And this is what we have been creating in our earlier sessions. So now we have to, the first step is we have to create a class for every web page. And I'm going to go for the same test that we had earlier, that is go to Google and uh, write something in the text box and hit the search button. So if we have to do this in a page object model fashion what we will do is so here if I go to google.com so this is one web page right and here we have uh, this text box and this search button that we have to interact with so I will create a separate class where I will store locator for this text box as well as for this search button. So now what I will do is I will create a new package so that all my pages or all page objects are stored separately. So I'll do a right click here. I will say new and go to package. And here you can give any name. You can say page objects or just say pages. So I'm saying this is giving the name pages to this package. Say finish. And here it is. And now I will create a new class. So I will say right click on the package new and go to class and here I will give the name. So give the name according to whatever the web page is. So this is Google search page. So you can say this is Google search page or yeah this is fine Google search page and say finish. Okay. 
so we have got this class for Google search page and here we will have all the locators so we can create a function for every object so I will say public static void and I can give the name as per the object so for example the very first object I have to identify is this search box which is a text box so I will say text box underscore search so that it is easy to identify and then in this function so I have created this function in this function I will say driver dot find element now see driver is the web driver that we have not yet defined anywhere now I can define a web driver here for example like this web driver driver but then there, this particular web driver will be for this particular class but we have to get the instance of the driver from our test so what we can do is we can pass it on from our test case and we will get it here so here I will say web driver driver so this is the driver that we will be getting from our test and here we will be using it so if I hover over it it will ask me to import so I will import the, this org dot open qa dot selenium web driver let me go again and yes this is org open qa selenium I will import this one and now I will use the same method driver dot find element by and I can use any method like CSS ID link name xpath so I am using name and I know the name is Q so we have already seen this if I do a inspect here and I can see this DOM here you can see the name is Q for this element so I'm going to use this Q so now I have identified it but I have to store it somewhere so I am going to store it in the web element variable so I will say web element I can say this as element equals this now again I have to import this web element from org open QA and I will do this and then I also have to return this to the test so I will say return element okay and because we are returning something and here we have set the return type as void so we have to say the return type is web element and do not worry if you are finding any difficulty in uh, the Java so you can follow along and you will understand these things in a while so I am just returning a variable which is of type web element so I have to define it here this is the return type of the function here okay now also here I can define web element as a class variable so that I do not have to define it in every function so I can define it here and here I will just make it as null and here I can just reference it okay now here again we are getting some error so if I hover over this you can see if I go here you can see it is saying change element to static so that it can be referenced in a static way so I have to just make it as static if I just hover over here again and just click hit this you can see this is now static and to make it available only to this class I can make it as private so this is private static web element element and here I have just initialized it to null and within every function of the object we can in initialize it to whatever is the locator so it will find that particular object store it in element and then we are returning the element to the test I can do the same thing for the button the search button I will again write a function public static and again I will say the return type is web element and I will say this is button and the button is search okay and again I will pass here web driver instance and here I will tell the locator so I will say element equals driver dot find element by dot I can use name again or any other locator as well and I already know that the name is btnk let me verify again if I go to inspect I can see this is name is btnk so I will say name btnk here and a semicolon and return 
element okay now here in this particular session we are just discussing a way where we identify all the web objects separately in the class and then all the actions we will be doing inside our test cases but we also have a different approach where we define all the objects as well as the actions that will be performed on those objects in a single class for every web page and just refer all the objects and their actions directly in the test case so this is something we will learn in the next session but for this section let us keep it very basic so you can see our class is now completed this is our very first object class and we have stored it inside the pages package now we will go inside test and we can create a new test now this is a test i already created earlier in the last session which was a very linear test where we are uh, identifying all the objects and doing action on this let us uh, update this itself so just to make it easier i will copy this and paste it again so that I keep the reference of the original test and here I will say this is Google search test I will say okay and here let us go here okay now see here what we have to do is the very first thing we will do in our test is we will import our pages class so here I will say import so this was Google search page so this is I will import it here okay now I am doing it in the existing uh, class test class because you can see the differences now okay so I have just imported this class and now these things will remain common as we have done earlier initializing web driver and setting the property for whatever browser you want to use for example here we are using chrome driver and here driver.get is fine now here is the change we have to make so here earlier we were saying driver.find element by name q and then send keys but now we will say here so google search page so you will get in the auto completion here and this you will get only after you have imported and here we will say dot and here as you as soon as you click on dot or as soon as you type dot you will find all the uh, variables and all the functions which are exposed on that particular class so as of now we have these two functions button search and text box search so we have to use the text box search here because this is the object for sending keys and here I also have to send the driver instance right so here I have to send driver now this driver is this one but again to make it uh, common to all the functions in this particular class I will take it from here this particular web driver driver I will copy it from here and take it to the top of the class and define it here at the class level so it will become a class variable and again I can here define it to null and here I will remove web driver so driver is being referenced from here and now again I have to make it as static so I will click here so you can see this is now static and I can also make it as private as well so private static web driver and here you can see it is being referenced here so I think I have to make it as private or not let me just check let me just see I will make it as private and see if it is able to reference it so here I will again say driver okay and then I will say send keys as we have seen earlier and here I can say anything automation step by step just type this in the search box okay and I will comment out this earlier statement so here you can see instead of finding the element here itself and then doing the action we are taking it from this Google search page and we are taking this function where we are also 
passing our driver instance so it will call this it will call this function and here it will find the element by the name q and then return the element and we will get it here and then we are performing the action send keys now again um, in the next session we will see how to refer the objects as well as its action from page object uh, pages but for this uh, session let us do it like this and the same thing i am going to do for the next object which is uh, which is this button and we have to click on this search button so i will again say i will comment out the earlier statement and i will say google search page dot and here we have to use this particular function which is button search so this is button search and then driver we are passing on to the it and then we are saying click okay or we can use the same thing send keys return because we know that uh, click might not be performed if it is overlapped by the search results so I will say send keys keys dot return okay so I should be having it here as well okay so did you see the difference now we are referring the objects from this page and then doing the actions on that and let us try to run this I will say right click run as Java application and let us see if this runs successfully yes opens the chrome browser and yes it has entered this text and clicked on the return key so we are able to use it successfully and similarly this i have shown for a single web page for every web page you will create a new class under the pages object and all the objects on that web page you can identify using these functions and then in the test you will refer it from here and in the next session we will also see how to also add the actions in the pages class so here we have actually done the step of creating a class and add object locators as well in that class and then we have created a class for test we referred the object from the pages class we have done this and let us look at the benefits of using page object model so one of the benefit that you can see is now all our objects will be stored separately in these classes which are under pages so whenever you have to make any changes you only have to come here in case there is any change in any object or the locator or the identifier of the object you have to come to that particular uh, page class and make the changes only here you don't have to touch the test cases because in the test cases we are not defining any locators in the test case we are just referring it from here so it becomes very easy for maintenance and you can see as of now this is a very very small test so you might not see the benefit that uh, what will happen if the object changes but when you have a very very large test cases and a lot of code then you will see the benefit that you don't have to go inside each and every test and you can do all the maintenance of objects from this particular page or class so it is very uh, easy for maintenance it also keeps the code clean so objects are kept separately from test scripts and can be used multiple times in multiple tests so it is not that if i have to use this particular text box object multiple times i do not have to define it multiple times it's only one time i will define every unique object and can refer it at multiple times in a single test case or in different test cases as well and then every unique object locator is created only once and it is easy for maintenance and very less rework is required so in next session as i told you we are going to go a little more deeper and we will create pom design with objects and function uh, which are uh, stored in separately in a class and we will do the practical implementation as well let's do a very quick recap today we learned what is page object model and how to implement page object model in a very simple way i hope this was very useful for you if you like this session please hit the like button and share with others and don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon so that you can keep receiving notifications whenever i will upload a new video thank you for watching and i will meet you in the next episode